Welcome to part two of the Sequitron Quick Setup demo. In part one, we did the initial testing using internal MIDI devices for both input and output. Here we're going to use external devices. So how do we get MIDI in or out of the PC? Well, there are several ways, but if it's got USB sockets, you can use a USB to MIDI adapter. Here's an example which has a MIDI input and a MIDI output at one end, and at the other, a lead with a USB plug. So first make sure the Sequitron is closed down. Then plug the adapter into the USB socket on the PC. Now this particular adapter has a light to show the USB part is working OK. Now we need to configure the Sequitron to use this new adapter. So start the program, click Config Ports, and allocate the USB device in both input and output sections. In our case, the input port has been allocated automatically, whereas the output has defaulted to the internal Microsoft synth. So deallocate that first, then allocate the USB device. Close the ports window. The port section on the main screen should now confirm the USB adapter is allocated to both input and output. If you want to save this configuration to avoid repeating it next time, click Config Save All to Default. And do not click the Run button yet. Now for the external keyboard. We're going to be using this Korg MicroKorg, which contains a keyboard and its own sound generator or synth so we can use it for both input and output for the Sequitron. These are the MIDI sockets. There's three of them here, but we'll be using in and out. And these are the audio outputs, left and right for stereo. Here's a standard MIDI cable. Now connect the adapter input to the MicroKorg MIDI out. This carries MIDI data from the MicroKorg keyboard to the Sequitron. Connect the adapter output to the MicroKorg MIDI in. This carries MIDI data from the Sequitron to the MicroKorg sound generator. Note that MIDI data is not audio. It's more like a music score, so it needs someone, in this case the MicroKorg, to interpret it to produce sounds. And these sounds come out from the audio outputs, so connect these to your PA system. We just need power to the microcorg, then we can switch it on. And this adapter has activity lights over the input and output sockets. You'll notice the input lights up, even though we are not pressing any keys yet. And this is due to background MIDI timing pulses from the microcorg. So let's check out the microcorg first. Turn up the volume and press some keys. All should work as expected. Now for one crucial step, which applies if you are using any single unit as both input and output. At the moment, the keyboard is using an internal or local connection to send MIDI data directly to the sound generator. And we want the Sequitron to intercept this data, so we must disable this local link for it to work properly. Now, different devices have their own ways of doing this, usually a menu option. With the microcorg, use the lower switch to select the MIDI option. If the switch is already pointing to MIDI, turn it away and back again. The second knob now controls the local setting, so turn it until the display changes from on to off. Now press some keys. They should not make a sound. Now we can click Run on the Sequitron. Now before you press any keys, the Sequitron needs to know which one to use as the command key. And this depends on your particular keyboard layout and octave setting. So click the Calibrate Command Key button, then press bottom C on your keyboard. Now any other keys can be nominated, but this is outside the scope of this demo. Now I didn't need to calibrate here, as the microcorg octave setting corresponds to the Sequitron's default if its left-hand octave light is green. Now if you're wondering how you change this on the fly during a performance, 
the calibrate command can be invoked directly from the music keyboard. So now all keys except this command key should play as normal. We can start the audible metronome on sequence 1 by pressing command 1 play. The keys go back to live mode. Stop sequence 1 by pressing command 1 stop. And let's start the metronome again and try some multi track recording. Apologies for the simplistic examples, but I'm still straddling the camera tripod and have trouble reaching the keys, let alone seeing them. And that's my excuse anyway. Right, that's it for part two. The final video in this series will give a simple but hopefully convincing demonstration of why the sequitron is different to other software sequences. Thanks for watching.